I first became aware of PTSD during the first during the Falklands War, when I was the Army's Director of Public Relations, and a very brave young captain in the Royal Artillery who had been a naval forward artillery controller did not reckon that he had anything wrong with him, as he said, until his girlfriend, who was now his wife, who was a medical student at the time, identified that he was suffering from PTSD. And having had that identified and been, as it were, treated for it, he then was, wrote a book in which he explained what had happened and pointed out that many other people were suffering whose problems were not being addressed in the same way and the dangers that that had for them and the others around them. That was followed by a number of documentary films that he made for the Sound, Sound Services Sound and Vision Corporation, which I think were ahead of their time then, and they pointed out a problem to people who, I think, pretended that it didn't exist. The next manifestations of it that came to me were really rather different. The first was when the Lockerbie air disaster happened and the Royal Highland Fusiliers were told to go and guard the bodies of the victims on the hillsides in Scotland until the inquest in place took place some 72 hours later. Luckily, there were two chaplains in the regiment at the time. One was handing over to the other. And one of them had been alerted to PTSD on an earlier occasion, and he advised the commanding officer to take note of those people who had been put in this position and record their names in case something happened in the future which could be attributed to that experience. And sure enough, 11 years later, it happened when somebody acted completely out of character and was found to have had to guard a child on a hill for for over for 72 hours plus and that experience had never gone away and he'd never had it treated or anyone taken any interest in it other than the fact that it happened. And the next occasion was really after the Second Gulf War which has been more documented but when we went into Bosnia and I'd been out on a recce and I was shown the sort of strain that individual soldiers were experiencing on refugee exchange posts or sitting as an observer in a Serbian gun position to see what in fact was happening. Now they were on their own, they were isolated from the chain of command. And it was quite clear that some of the things they were seeing and having to go through, not having been experienced by their own superiors, were going unrecognized. So we added a psychiatric nurse to the staff of people going to Bosnia in order to make certain that there was some help immediately available. But putting all those things together, it was quite clear that this was something which perhaps modern warfare, with its emphasis on individuals having to do things without the support of all the chain of command and friends and the system, which has always added up to really counselling, I think, in the past, that we actually need to treat this differently than we have in the past, not ignore it, because this is not something that puts people completely out of action permanently if the right action is taken in the right way by the rightly trained people who can recognise the symptoms and act accordingly.